the richest blessings from the one true and living God and the Lord Jesus Christ, the one and all. Uh, this is Bob Hagen, another edition of As He Leads on the Uptime Network. I uh, hope you're having a pleasant day. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm actually not in the woods. I spent a lot of my youth in the woods, but the Lord pulled me out of the woods. There's a, there's a segue for you, but I'm using a, a little bit of a virtual background today. Uh, uh, I love the woods. I love um, being out and, you know, a lot of times I used to take walks alone in the woods and things like that and in the, in the past, and uh, there's something real peaceful about it. But uh, what I'd like to do today is, is get into God's word on the believer's hope uh, many times, especially with the way things are going in our world right now. Um, we have a tendency to uh, get very discouraged. Uh, the recent teaching I did was how to overcome discouragement. It's, um, it's in the archives if you want to go back and listen to it. And it's, it's an important thing because one of the things the enemy tries to do is he tries to discourage us, uh, tries to uh, get us to give up hope, if you will. Um, say, well, all the things that you're talking about, about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, so where is the promise of his coming? And, you know, how can we possibly make it any longer? And, and uh, things in your life might get to be to the point where you're just wanting to throw in the towel. You know, the old, the old uh, thing that they do in the boxing match when the one guy is getting pummeled and the, the, his corner will throw the towel in so they stop the fight. But we're in a, we're in a spiritual battle. So there is going to be, and there are, excuse me, there are going to be times when Things are not smooth and things are not perfect, but we do have the hope. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Okay, let's go to 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2 and in verse 19. For what is our hope or crown, or excuse me, or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Yes, we are. We are going to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. Uh, something that we have to look, that's something that we're looking forward to as being uh, born again uh, sons and daughters of God is that we've been given this great hope. Um, we have passed from death into life and there's a, there's a lot involved with that. Okay, now we're going to go to Psalm 31. We're going back in the Old Testament. Psalm 31, verse 24. And uh, the word hope in this scripture, uh, I'm going to read the scripture. I'm going to tell you the Hebrew word for hope is. It's real interesting. Be of a good courage, and ye shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. The word for hope is the word yacha in the Hebrew, which means to wait, to be patient, uh, to stay, to tarry, and also to trust. And if you think about it, if you go back to um, right after Moses died, and Joshua was, was being given his um, commands from the Lord. The Lord said many times, you know, he said, be, be uh, strong and of a good courage and be very courageous through that whole first chapter of Joshua, which we're not going to go into right now. But he told him that he said, I'm going to be with you. And wherever your foot, wherever you go, I'm going to be with you and I'm going to give that to you. And it was an encouragement from Jehovah to Joshua and the children of Israel that, that he was going to be the one that took care of them. He was going to be the one that fought their fights. Uh, it was not, you know, that the, the requirement was that the Lord was going to get the worship. The Lord was going to get the credit. Um, when you When you begin to take the credit for any of your successes in life, and I believe this is true from the bottom of my heart, any of them, anything that we've been given, anything that we're blessed with, if you will, in our lives, is because the Lord has our lives in, in his hands. In fact, it says that we are engraven 
in his hands. We are, we are um, continually before him. Uh, we need to really realize that this, this is true. Okay. And now we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 14. Let's spend a little bit of time in the Old Testament. I, I love Jeremiah. It's a great, great section of work. In Jeremiah chapter 14, and in verses 8 and 9, O oh, the hope of Israel, the Savior thereof in time of trouble, why shouldest thou be as a stranger in the land, and as a wayfaring man that turneth aside to tarry for a night? Why shouldest thou be as a man a stony, as a mighty man that cannot save? Yet thou, O oh Lord, art in the midst of us. And we are called by thy name. Leave us not. Okay. Um, that, that part in there. Uh, let's see. Is talking about having. Um, a hope. The hope of Israel. The word hope in the in the Hebrew. Is uh, I'm just going to. You can go back in the Strong's. Interlinear. Or Strong's Concords 4723 in the Hebrew. It's mikvah, which something uh, waited for. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, also, the definition is a caravan, abiding. And then this is the one I love, gathering together. Whew. Of course, it's, I'm sure it's a coincidence and hope. So the Savior, therefore, in time of trouble. Now, in the Old Testament, they were looking forward to the appearing you know the birth and of christ they they did not it was not at that time done but they were looking forward to it now our lives we look back on it and realize it has happened but we do have this hope uh, we have something that's we're waiting for you know it has not happened yet jesus christ has not returned yet but he will Okay, now we're going to go to Romans chapter five. We're going to we're going to jump on the on the Bible bus with Pastor McGee. We're going to go to Romans chapter five, and we're going to go to some scriptures here. We're going to start off in in verse two. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Those four verses there are really something, because we have access by faith in this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. It says that we're to glory in tribulations. Uh, it's not that we're happy that we're going through them, but knowing the tribulations and the things that we're going through are working, working patience. It's one of the things that, that I really uh, sometimes have a struggle with is patience. And I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there that do too. And patience, hope and, and experience. It's, it's the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that is given to unto us. Shed abroad means flooded. It's like a flood. It's it's not God does not just give you the, a little drop of the Holy Spirit. As we'll see later on, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's the inner man. It's the new man. It's created after Him in righteousness and truth. It's a um, it's the new man. You know, the, or this is this is. This is the outer man that you're seeing right here, and it's perishing day by day, but the new man is being renewed daily. That's what, that's what we should be striving to be able to do. Okay, now we are going to go to Romans chapter 8, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. And we're going to go from Romans chapter 8, and we're going to read verses 20 to 25. Okay. In verse 20, for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope, 
because the creature itself also shall be delivered from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, having for the waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope. And I've seen some texts that say, say that we were saved to hope, but hope that is not seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But we have hope for that we see not. Then do we with patience wait for it. Okay, once again, we have to be patient. Once again, we've, it's something that's set before us, but it's, it's a, uh, we all know if we've made Jesus Christ the Lord in our lives and, and believe that God has raised him from the dead and, and uh, made him our master, that um, there's going to be struggles, but we have this hope. It's set before us. It's it's not it's not out there, and and uh, God keeps pulling it back, saying, "Well, you guys haven't done enough works yet, so I'm going to pull it back another four or five years, and you know, or another twenty years, or whatever." People people that set dates on the rapture uh, don't listen to them. That's one thing you won't. You won't hear here on uptime. We don't set the dates. There are people that are that accuse different individuals of setting dates. Um, it's, there's a difference between talking about a season of time, talking about the things that are happening in the world, and the signs in the heavens, and setting a date. Because the Father is the only one that knows that. You know, not even the Son. He's going to tap him on the shoulder and say, "Time to go." All right, now we're going to go to Romans chapter 15 and uh, look at verse 4, okay? For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And if you look back at verse 3, for even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. One of the things you have to realize, and I've said this before, and we've, you've probably heard this many, many times over the course of any teaching that you've ever sat under uh, on the Bible, uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ did not have to do what he did. Uh, it says in verse three, he even pleased not himself. It says, and when he was in the garden, he he asked the father if uh, this cup could be taken from him, but not his will. The father's will needed to be done. The reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. He didn't have any reproach. He was a man. He was a man of no sin. He was a a perfect man. He didn't. You know, his his blood was was precious and pure and and that's why it had to be it had to be spilled it's an incredible thing it really is it's so all-encompassing i i can't really explain all the ramifications of the greatness of what the lord jesus christ accomplished but over two thousand years later we're still talking about the greatest man that ever lived it came that we might have life and have more abundantly the lord jesus christ now let's go down to verse 13 of uh, Romans 15. In verse 13, <clears throat> Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now the God of hope, once again that word hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. He's the it's like a prayer, you know, fill you with all joy and peace and believing in faith, believing. And 
through the power of the Holy Ghost. That's being born again of the Spirit of God. And as we as we get farther along here, we'll talk about that indwelling the Holy Spirit. But this is something else, you know. You can have joy and you can have peace in your life. Uh, before I became a believer way back when, I didn't have any joy and peace in my life. You know, I grew up in an era in California where it was uh, all we were saying is give peace a chance. Remember that song? All we are saying is give sure. You know, and there's you know, world peace and, uh, you know, man's going to attain, uh, what do they call it? Nirvana. Uh, different different uh, religions different religions taught different things about um, you know the attainment of world peace uh, but without the prince of peace it's impossible it's not going to happen for there is one name named under heaven whereby name named among men whereby we must be saved and that's acts 412 and then john 14. You know, when Jesus came, he said, I am I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes into the Father but by me. So many times you'll hear it said, either Jesus Christ told the truth, either he told the truth or he lied. If he told the truth, we have everything to gain by believing in his word. If he lied, I'm wasting your time and everything that we're doing on here is a waste of time and i do not believe that it is i believe it's profitable because it's bringing people back to the father it's like uh greg and i were talking about before we started this today you know the 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 parable of the forgiving father also known as the prodigal son when the prodigal when the son who had gone off and done his own thing had realized that he couldn't do it himself anymore all he wanted to do is go home. He was, he was lonely. You know, it doesn't say in the, in the scriptures that he was lonely. And then he decided, you know, I miss my brother and my dad or anything, but it says when he came to himself, he said, he realized that my father's servants have more than I have. And that's all I want to be as a servant. It's a good key right there. Nothing wrong with wanting to be a servant, but he was still a son. You know, what he had done had not cut him off from being the father's son. And when he returned, his father ran to meet him. And he fell on him, and hugged him, and, you know, put the coat on him and the signet ring. And they had a party. He was, he said, my son was dead, but now he's alive. So he, he was grateful that his son had returned. And I believe that that's the way God is with us. You know, the people that are out there that are doing their own thing, they're um, saying, well, you know, following Jesus Christ and, and uh, being a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, being a Christian, if you will, is a crutch. And it's just, you know, you, you guys are weak because you need a crutch and this is what you're doing. It's all it's all pie in the sky and it's it's just doesn't make any sense and i beg to differ and when you get born again of god's spirit and you start to put your eyes on this the greatness of this word of god that's been given to us and you start reading it and you start understanding it then you're going to go what a savior we have incredible okay now it's time for second corinthians chapter three. Oh boy this is a great verse here 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Okay. This is Paul writing to the Corinthians. But we have such a hope. We, we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to return. But we don't use these flowery words to impress people. You know, we're not doing this to... Um, dazzle people with our brilliance <laughs> especially not this guy that's that's not going to happen um i've been blessed by uh, the lord to know a little bit of word over the years uh, i've learned a few things um 
you know, just like everybody else, I've got my struggles. I'm dealing with things right now. But you know what? If I'm using great plainness of speech in, in endeavoring to teach you on a, the believer's hope, my, my belief is, my hope is, if you will, is that you'll understand this and realize that you too can be an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. It talks about that in Romans chapter 8. And if you're an heir of God, an heir of God, an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ Jesus, you have an awful lot to live for, not only in this life, but in that what's to come. Okay, now let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And then verse 15. Not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. Now, Paul's talking about, you know, having hope and faith being increased. The, the amount of, um, when you first become a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you, you're like, a child, uh, you you don't maybe you don't know a whole lot of word of God. Maybe you just know a few verses. Maybe you just know a principle or two. But as you grow in Him, as you walk in Him, you you are enlarged. You know you become more mature in the faith, if you will. And then you're able to. Uh, it says in the Word that God's will is to all that all men are to be saved. His will is to all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So if that's the, if that is God's will, that all men are to be saved. Let me ask you something. Are all men to be going to be saved? No, that's not going to happen. But his will is that all men are to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. And as I'm teaching this, if somebody comes to a knowledge of the truth, I certainly like to hear it. You know, if, if you've uh, come to this teaching platform and you thought that you would watch it and get a good laugh out of this, uh, this old California hippie here uh, uh, talking about Jesus Christ and the Lord Jesus Christ and God and things of that, you can always uh, send me your comment at HaganRW52 at Yahoo.com. And... Uh, I like comments, you know, either pro or con. If you um, agree with me, fine. If you disagree with me, which many times people do, that's fine too. And I'm not going to um, cut off your freedom of speech because of that. But you know, the word of God is what I've been trying to hold forth here. And uh, as we do that, I believe that God gives us the understanding. And uh, so I want to show you something. Now we're going to go to um, the epistles now. We're going to keep stay in the epistles, but we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 1. And we're going to look at verse 18. What I want you to do, this is an assignment for the... <laughs> I'm giving you an assignment, even though this we do these teachings every couple of weeks. What I want you to do is I want you to go to Ephesians chapter 1. I want you to read verses 1 through 17. And then when you get down to 18, you read this scripture. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. The eyes of your understanding, the word understanding in that verse is the word synesis, S-U-N-E-S-I-S. And the word synesis is two, is two rivers flowing together. It's like the Missouri and the... Uh, I can't think of the other one right now. The two rivers, there's many rivers that, that flow together to, to uh, empty into the Mississippi River. And it's like the, the rivers, the eyes of your understanding, it's like the rivers of your understanding being enlightened. So as you put on this word of God, as you get into the gospels and you learn about Jesus Christ, as you start to read the epistles and you start to put on the mind of Christ and you start to walk forth boldly like that, you're going to be enlightened. 
You know, I'm not talking about transcendental meditation and light. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, getting one of those orb things, you know, or getting one of those boards the, with the funny little name on it, you know, and asking it to help you and all that. That's just, that's witchcraft. That's a, that's an abomination to God. You don't go, you don't go to see psychics. Uh, don't have anybody read your palm. I remember having that done when I was a young man. And I thought, yeah, okay. And the reading was just, you know, it was not very edifying to say, to say the least. Okay. But don't you want to have the eyes of your understanding and light? I do. I want to be able to understand what's going to happen. I don't understand everything about what's going to happen, even this very day that I'm doing this. But I understand one thing that that God is going to going to give me enlightenment if I continue to uh, put Him first. If I continue to uh, endeavor to walk according to His Word and live a life that you know it's pleasing to Him. God is a holy God. You know, we're not always going to be faithful to the Lord. But I will guarantee you one thing. The Lord is always going to be faithful to us. I guarantee you. Okay, now let's go to chapter 2 of the Ephesians. And we're going to take a, we're going to kind of pop through these next few verses here. And this is a, this is a scripture that, that proves that we're from another planet. No, wait a second. No. <laughs> Now, I might be, I don't know, that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Paul is talking to these, these folks in Ephesus. At this time you were without Christ. Okay, there was a time in everybody's life before they became believers in the Lord Jesus Christ that they were without Christ. They did not have God and they, they were without hope in the world. This is what the word of God says. So if somebody comes up and says, well, I'm a good person. And I've never heard anybody in my life. And then why do I need this Jesus? Well, you do. You need him because he came that he laid down his life for you. It's really, you know, it's, it's such a, um, it's such an easy thing to accept, but the hardest thing for a man and a woman to do, I believe, is to admit that they need a savior, that they actually, you know, they can't do it of their, you know, they cannot pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. They're not self-made. You know, you hear about people being self-made millionaires. A true person who has been blessed with an abundance like that will not give the credit to themselves. The credit will go elsewhere. You know, if somebody is very successful, um, yeah, I love it when the athletes that are very successful will always, will always thank God for giving me the ability and to him be the glory. When I hear a man or a woman saying that, I have a lot of respect for them. Because there's so many different athletes out there, especially with all the baseball playoffs and stuff that are going on right now. And exceptionally talented, talented people out there. But if they're in it just so that everybody can worship them, that's going to be short lived because you'll you'll forget about these people in, in a few years. But you're not going to um, forget it when they when they get together and they give God the, the credit for their accomplishments. Um, that's one of the reasons that, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of certain teams. I had to get into that, but there's certain athletes that have always been uh, in, in my eyes, uh, really, you know, if they, if they give the glory to God, it's a, it's a real, it's a boost to see that. And I always, I always think to myself that it's, uh, you know, it's not, it's not me, you know, it's just, 
you know, I went out and I scored 35 points in the championship game. And after the, after the game, he come out and they say, boy, you were something else you couldn't miss. Well, that's because of the ability God gave me. And I thank my Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ for that ability. That's kind of a neat thing. I'm off on a rabbit trail there a little bit. But anyway, now we're going to go to Romans, excuse me, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter four and uh, verse four. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called, and one hope of your calling. Okay. One body and one spirit. Now, how come there's so many denominations? You ever ask yourself that? It's because uh, people have disagreements with what the Word of God says and what it means. Uh, I don't believe uh, the one true and living God ever made one denomination. He just, well, actually, he made one body. Uh, but he never said, well, I think we should have 6,500 denominations and everybody should have a different beliefs. Um, it says we're supposed to be of the same mind. We're supposed to be, you know, thinking the same thing. Uh, we're, su we're supposed to be striving for the masteries. Um, how do we do that if we're always arguing about everything? It doesn't, it doesn't work out there, you know. House divided against itself cannot stand. Okay, now we're going to get to Colossians. This, this kind of, I'm praying this is interesting for you all up to this point. Uh, Colossians chapter 1, and in verse 5. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. The hope is laid up for you in heaven it is what? The hope of eternal life, which has been set forth in the truth of the gospel. And as you read down through the first chapter of the book of Colossians, let's, uh, let's go down to verse 25 if we could. Okay. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Now, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of this glory among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. You see, the mystery was part of the mystery was that, you know, that it wasn't in the Old Testament that the Gentiles were going to be able to be part of any of the promises. But as the New Testament period started, it became evident that this is what was going to happen. And the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, the Gentiles got in. Uh, Christ in you, the hope of glory. What does that mean? Christ in you. That's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And what is that? That's the hope of glory. That's something that in God, I'm going to show you this in Titus in a second here. Uh, this, this hope is to anticipate, usually with pleasure, uh, expectation or confidence. We hope for this. It's going to happen. We're not sitting here doing this and going to come on next week and say, well, you know, we were wrong. Um, uh, there's not going to be any rapture. You know, we just, we discovered that it was, uh, all this was, uh, all this was made up. I was actually reading a article from a, a gentleman who you know, I've, I've known for a while. And uh, he's, you know, he just has certain, he has certain views that, that differ from mine. I mean, I still, I still love the brother and everything, but um, it's like, you know, reading it, I'm going, well, I, it's not, not really very edifying to know that, you know, I thought the Lord Jesus Christ went through, you know, he's the one that took the wrath upon himself at Calvary. You know, uh, God put all the, he put everything on him because he was the only one that could carry it. And when it was finished, he said it is finished. 
but he's he didn't say i'm finished and i'm never gonna jesus christ on the cross never said well it is finished and that's gonna be it and i'm I'm taking off now i'm never coming back never said that he told them after he had been risen from the dead he said you tarry in jerusalem you wait into the promise of the father and that was on the day of pentecost the outpouring of the holy spirit with the uh, manifestation of the uh, gift of speaking in tongues and different things that went on in the first century church which i believe did not end when the bible was canonized they continue to this day there are people who do not believe that any of these things still are in operation but it's like everything else you, you have a right to your opinion but i'll tell you one thing um, if they are still available i think we should we should use them okay let's go to titus chapter one and i'm gonna i'm gonna show you something that god cannot do wait a second there's something he can't do yeah titus chapter one verse two in hope of eternal life which god that cannot lie promised before the world began okay god cannot lie and he cannot contradict himself so he gives us the hope of eternal life christ in you the hope of glory it says here that he cannot lie he promised this before the world began so is he going to break his promise is he going to okay i promised that all that follow me are going to have eternal life but you know it's going to be one of those gotcha moments uh i was just kidding no i i'm not i don't want to sound like i'm being facetious or you know anything that's being disrespectful to the one true and living god but i'm just saying that he doesn't do this he, he doesn't he doesn't dangle the carrot and pull it away and you know do any of that kind of stuff because he's promised this from before the world began it's our hope it's something that's it's something we can look forward to and something i'm looking forward to and i'm praying that you're looking forward to it too okay now let's go to hebrews chapter 6 look at verse 19 which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast which entereth into that within the veil okay in the old testament and if you go through hebrews they had to do the sacrifices every year um the priest the high priest had to go in he would he would have to do the sacrifices and he'd have to do um, the sin offering for himself and also for the for the people but he had to do that it was something that was done on a on a regular basis jesus christ was came and his sacrifice was accepted by the eternal father for once and for all Um, it says here that we this hope we have is an anchor of the soul it's an anchor what does an anchor do when you drop it in a harbor it keeps the boat from from floating away it keeps the it keeps you says sure and steadfast here it's a good way to describe it sure and steadfast it keeps you solid you know has anybody ever told you you're a solid man or you're a solid woman you know one of the things i like about you is you're solid because i can count on you you know i know you're there and if i call you you're going to be there and you know it's just it's like a foundation strong and solid an anchor Jesus Christ is, you know, talks about the harbor of peace. Um, um, I'm trying to think of it's a harbor of, um, I don't know, but there's there's a harbor, you know, when when there's a when there's a storm at sea, the ships stay out outside, you know, until the waters are calm, and then they come in. They don't try to get into port when the storm is rocking and rolling. They don't do that. And these hurricanes they don't come in they're way out to sea they get they get them you know they they shut the oil platforms down they get everybody off of them and they move everyone out when everything calms down it gets peaceful again they bring everybody back 
So anyway, having an anchor of the soul, full sure and steadfast, is really, really a real blessing. Okay, now we're going to go to First Peter chapter one. Yeah, that's just a couple more verses to go here. First Peter chapter one. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Okay, he's begotten us again. All right, is that going to sort of like being born again, maybe? Begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. If there was no resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, there was no hope. If the Lord Jesus Christ was not raised from the dead and did not ascend to the right hand of the Father and did not send the, the Comforter, the gift of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, we have no hope. This has just been taking up your time watching this. But if we do, which I believe we do, he's given us a lively hope, a living hope, if you will. It's not something we should dread every day we get up. We dread being a Christian because it's, oh, you know, I, it's just to dread. It's just, it's just, it's not worth it. It's every bit of worth it. And it's not always going to be easy. We've never said on here that, Follow, being followers of Lord Jesus Christ is an easy life, but it is a better life. It is the way that we have found the works, and we invite you to give it a try. I've said this so many times in these teachings before. Just give the Lord Jesus Christ a try. You have nothing to lose. Um, get a hold of a Bible. Get a hold of a King James Version or new king james version whatever and just read start reading in john get to know this jesus christ a little bit and then maybe afterwards you can ask him say hey look uh if you're there you know i'd really like to get to know you and i need for you to show me that you're there and uh, i want to turn my life over to you and i want to be i want you to be with me each and every day of my life from now on till the end of time. You know, that's a lively hope, not something where we're going to just, you know, get up and dread it every day. I don't know why this came to mind because, you know, when things are, when things are heavy on you, sometimes it's hard to get up. Uh, I know this, uh, this brother by the name of Brian, who's been going through cancer treatments. A wonderful brother love him dearly um he's still praising the lord he's still thanking god in the midst of the things he's going through uh, i know other people that are going through similar things and are still being thankful to god and praising him a uh, dear friend of ours passed away recently and over the time that she had cancer she was praising god and you would never know it if you didn't know her she was going through, but her life was a witness of the love of God and all the lives she touched. And it's just something else, you know, she could have given up and said, you know, why did God put this on me? Um, but I'll never, ever forget her. Well, neither of us will ever forget her for the witness of the love of God that, that lived within that woman, you know. It affected more than just her husband and her family. It affected people, a lot of people, maybe that at some point in eternity, she'll find out how many people she touched. But I know it's going to be a bunch of people. Okay, we have one more verse to go here. We're going <laughs> to, finally, he's finally going to end. The guy's long winded. First John chapter 3 and verse 3. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. It talks about how, uh, uh, behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, 
that we should be called the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Not as he was, beaten and, and bloody and beaten on the cross. You see him as he is now in, in his dynamics and his glory. And um, I just want to challenge you folks out there that, that are wondering if there is truth. I believe that the word of God is true. Uh, when Jesus was tempted of the devil, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He didn't say every other word or every 50th word, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And how do you know that? By getting to know him, getting to know his word. And it's a relationship that you can have with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a religious experience. Um, it's, it's a it's it's a day by day thing. Uh, some days you just seem to be tapped in and everything's going super great, and then all of a sudden, boom! There'll be something that'll come up that'll be an obstacle. But you know, it makes you stronger getting through um, obstacles. You know. The military, they put these guys through boot camp. I've never, I've never been through boot camp, but I've heard it's rough. But when they get through the boot camp, they're tougher. And they can see how much more that they can do than they've ever thought they're able to accomplish. And I'm sure that the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was praying to the Father in the garden, and, and he was praying and, and he was sweating in the blood and he was just crying his heart out to him father you know is there any other way i know that this is going to be i know what's going to happen i've read this i i know it's going to be can i can i do this are you going to give me the strength to do this but not my will although i'm weak i don't want to i don't want to be people to dislike me i don't want to be beaten and killed but I'm willing to do what you want me to do. I'm going to lay down my life. And it says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the, he endured the cross. He endured the shame. It was a shame to be crucified. But for the joy that was set before him. And I believe the joy, a lot of that was, he saw the future. And he he. He saw all the people that were going to be touched by what he accomplished. All the people that were going to come to a knowledge of the truth. Down through the generations. You know, it doesn't say that right in Hebrews there. But I believe that that was a joy. It wasn't a joy that he was being, having nails driven through his body. Or having his side pierced or having a, a those thorns were like five inches long driven into his scalp. That wasn't a joy. Or being whipped. There's no joy in being whipped. But the joy that was set before him was. I'm laying down my life. So that others might live. I don't. Really know how to explain. How you. How you can love that much. But I believe that this is what the Lord Jesus Christ. Did when he laid down his life. And I don't believe he ever stopped. Loving like that. His ministry has not stopped. It's just relocated to the right hand of the Father. And he's still energizing us here as we're getting toward the end times. So that's what I wanted to share today. Uh, the Believer's Hope. I'm thankful for each and every one of you that has taken the time to, uh, to watch me on here. And to God be the glory. Uh, once again, I'm very thankful for my brother, Greg Messina, and uh, giving me this opportunity to come on here and uh, getting the getting the scriptures up. And sometimes I bounce around like follow the bouncing ball with Mitch Miller, but it always seems to work out for the best. And uh, I thank you, Lord, for the day. And I thank you for all the folks here. And I thank you for the word of God going out and touching people's lives. 
and I thank you for just who you are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you folks. Take care. I'll see you on down the road.